<coughs> so indeed, I'm going to talk about um, platforms mm -hmm. um, built with RDK and, and how certification is going to solve a lot of these problems that you see on the slide here. So in our, in our case, as Steve mentioned, we're talking about super aggregation. That's the use case that we're trying to solve with RDK. Um, but I think so, how to put this into context. So RDK is a big bundle of open source. And uh, that's a huge advantage because our operators today and the vendors we work with can leverage that open source to build a platform. So the platform is the key word. And I, I, I heard in the opening session from Jason, he talked about standardization and freedom. So we've got all this RDK open source. How do we achieve standardization and freedom? And then I saw the, 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 you know, the goal of this is interoperability. Now, in our case, we're talking about super aggregation platforms, right? Um, so if we look at this slide, you will see that on the left, we have the open source. And um, with that, you've actually got to build a platform. Now, we had the previous speakers talking about broadband and, and routers. We're talking about super aggregation. So the first thing you've got to do is you've got to take that open source and you're going to put it in a platform. And actually, there's different kind of platforms. Uh, we talk about retail platforms where D2C providers are interested. And we talk about managed platforms where uh, telcos and pay TV operators that are trying to super aggregate are going to be interested. And RDK, uh, we depend on RDK to provide the baseline platform. You know, where Steve talked, we can't afford things to fragment. It's too expensive nowadays. We need to use the open source, but we need some level of certification to achieve that standardization. So if we look at all the great RDK Thunder services for being able to build a, a video super aggregation platform, Steve showed we need to support uh, you know, live OTT content, premium apps, VOD, legacy broadcast maybe for, for, for the satellite operators. And we need to put that into to managed platforms. But if you're bundling, you also have unmanaged platforms. So I'm going to show how RDK plays the role for all, all of those. So we're particularly interested in RDK for the, the Thunder services that we need to build a platform for a super aggregator video platform for telcos, pay TV operators. And what we want to not do is rebuild that for every operator differently. We do want to give the freedom to work with different SOC vendors, different OEM. But how do we show to our customers, to our pay TV operators, when they go from RDK 5 to RDK 6, that the vendors we work with are, are using the latest versions of RDK and they're not sneaking in some proprietary services? And this is the value of a, a baseline certification for a defined platform. Now, we call it RDK, so well, I think the, the value is the RDK certification because the open source of RDK can also be used for, for doing other features, OTT, home automation. You know, there's, there's different profiles of platform. So the important thing is that open source needs to move fast. And if we have this level of certified platform to be able to build super aggregation, it also helps drive the open source because you can innovate around that and you can show your customers actually new features like uh, using RDKC for a camera and uh, running on a broadband router, uh, the doorbell because it's always on, you know, the video. So, so these are the great use cases you can build around it. But now if we look at the third thing, um, if we're trying to get to the initial place where you want to start for a D2C and a platform. So RDK has that today. We're able to build a super aggregated platform. It does support live OTT, VOD. It does support the premium apps. There's still some certification to go through, and that differs depending on whether you're in a, a retail device or a managed platform. And when I talk about a managed platform, a managed platform is something where an operator actually cares about the next version, how to upgrade it. There's an SLA that has to be met, whereas a retail device, the operator is only caring about their app. And they don't care what the platform does in the background because somebody else is taking care of that. So what you'll see here is with this in initial level of what we would call an RDK certification, for a super aggregation platform today, RDK can actually certify for us that the OEM and the SOC vendors are using the right Thunder services that we've defined as what is a, a video accelerator for super aggregation. And this is a massive step because that allows our partners to build a, a platform that, that we can use, that can demo it to operators, and um, it can be a great reference platform for managed platform development, which is the branded. And I think that's why I want to explain. On this level, we have a, 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 a baseline platform that supports the super aggregation. And we've talked about how RDK can support that certification. But where do we come in as our data? I mean, we come in on this next level, which is, as Steve said, there's no excuse to fragment a super aggregated platform today, or we can't afford it from a cost point of view. The same goes for the implementation of security on that platform. So security today on a, on a we talked about this open source. Um, 
And we also, you need to leverage that investment that other people have put into the open source. You know, billion dollar companies are putting investment there. You don't want to build that yourself. But what you do want to do is have this certified starting point. And then security today is not just a traditional CAS. I mean, we've got DRM, we've got watermarking, we've got infield uh, provisioning, we've got, uh, uh, for, you know, if you want to support uh, a premium app after launch, they might only come to the platform a year after you launched it. And then they're going to say, we have all these requirements, and it's not going to be great if you didn't take care of those. So if you think back to the R tab, it's critical for us to be able to see the roadmap of RDK, early access, and to be able to test early and actually have some way of prioritizing platform needs for super aggregation into the RDK community. So this is the key. So on the top point, you now start seeing what we call managed platforms. And a managed platform is both a device that the, our, our customers, telcos, pay TV operators, they have to manage that device. They have to uh, upgrade it when the next version of RDK comes out. They have to prove to studios, movie labs, to premium app vendors that this is secure on each new release. <clears throat> this is where we come in. And um, so what you're seeing here is a killing of the fragmentation, so a standardization, as Jason mentioned, both on the RDK certification of the platform profile, but also on the level of a security pro provider like ourselves. Now, other, other security providers can do this as well. But the important thing is that nobody fragments the ecosystem, including the security for managed platforms, as well as the basic retail. Now, the next interesting point is um, uh, when we talked about bundling. So we have two use cases today. We can sell security into point solutions, where, where it's D2C, and we can sell security into bundled operators. Now, we, or, or let's, we call it super aggregation. But in super aggregation, the interesting point is that today you need every platform that we see in this picture, right? You need to put your managed app onto retail devices, iPads, phones, uh, and, then you <clears throat> and you need to manage devices. Um, and the managed devices that matter today is a set-top box for broadcast for an operator that does that, but a pure OTT puck, a hybrid puck, a puck with a tuner, but also a TV. <clears throat> I've sat in a panel last year where we were discussing uh, the connected TVs and is the set-top box dead. And what I think we need to really realize today is that we have something called a managed device. And a managed device is not dead, because if you look in this picture, and a pay TV operator today, today can have his puck that's going to be managed. He can have his app going on an unmanaged device, which is mobile. And when a TV comes into the picture, what is a TV? It can be an unmanaged device where you put your app, and a consumer buys his expensive uh, 8K TV, which he puts on his wall. Operator doesn't want to manage that, but he wants to offer a consumer a managed experience. And then, you, therefore, you can have a managed TV. And uh, here comes the important point, is that managed devices are not dead. And in an operator, you can have a retail device or a managed TV. So if you see in this picture, this allows a, a super aggregated platform with RDK to actually have a non-fragmenting baseline for the ecosystem on all devices. And we can also support operators that have the, the managed device um, challenge, but that managed device challenge across a range of devices. Every bundling operator today, they will have a hybrid, a puck, a puck tuner. In some markets, the TV makes no sense. In some markets, it makes great, great sense. And probably in most operators, you're going to need both because some consumers will not take your managed TV. So I think this is the, if you look on the right here on the, on the screen, you'll see the optimization of the pay TV operator and the ability to customize. So going back to what Jason said, standardization, both at the basic level, but also at the managed platform level, and then the freedom. And here's where we come to business models. Our business models, the, you know, RDK provides the open source. You build a platform, but that platform has been built specifically to meet somebody's business model. And in Ideto's case, we're targeting D2C, but we're also targeting operators that super aggregate. And it's their business models that we need to maximize for that operator to be successful. And so we're very excited because with RDK and a certification at this level, we can build on a, a fantastic super aggregator platform. And we can pre-integrate and pre-certify based on movie labs, based on the premium app requirements of the, the likes of Netflix and Disney and Prime and the others. We can make sure that the platform's ready before you start the project. And this is making a much quicker time to market. And in combination with the ability to join the RDK Technical Advisory Board, we can bring from our operators around the world the needs to RDK, and we can discuss whether these, these are priority features that should go into the roadmap. Um, and all this leads to 
which I'll hand over to Steve. All this leads to is the, a really a great ability to start with a platform, do innovation, be able to demo, and maybe on a closing point, I talked about managed platforms and the ability to put a, an operator wants to brand his, his operator, his, his uh, experience, right? And Lightning, we've been using Lightning, and I think Lightning is another differentiator because it allows you to put on the managed devices a consistent user experience on your set of, your hybrid set of box, puck, puck with tuner or TV. So this is another game changer in RDK, which we're very excited about. So between RTAB for the roadmap, a, a certification, and uh, a UX that actually is completely relevant for managed devices, we're going to be able to offer, we think, the, a very cost-effective and competitive open source-based standard, but with a freedom to innovate to our customers. So this is exciting. So I'll hand over to Steve to explain what I mean yeah, by, uh, by that. I, mean, I, think, I think maybe just a comment. I mean, I think um, technology serves the business at the end of the day, right? And, and I think one of the things that have uh, been very good uh, for me personally as well, working very closely with you guys, is, is, to, is to learn more about uh, how RDK can actually unlock business models that are, that are different. Not everybody has the same business, not everybody has the same business models. And I think, uh, you know, one of the things that I, that I uh, yeah, has, has, been, has been very interesting for me to see is how you are leveraging the, the investments that we've made in certification and standardization and bringing it out to places where businesses have, to, have different needs to meet. You have the expertise, and, and, but that, that, that opportunity is open to other uh, partners potentially to, to bring as well, right? Where, Absolutely. Where I mean, the, 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 you know, this is a... From an RDK perspective, this allows us to really function uh, cost-effectively uh, uh, within the ecosystem, discuss business models, bring them, and of course with our ecosystem partners who are contributing into the same ecosystem, there's reuse for everyone, which is critical today for, because the differentiated business models on the one hand are the way you, you compete, but the other is the cost today. If you can cut your costs and operational maintenance, which I think Steve will cover in this next section, then you're in a winning uh, position. Uh, yeah. as a vendor.